My dearest Letty Burl, Jimmy and I are once again scouting for General Jackson. I have asked that Jimmy be allowed to accompany me. His commanding officers have all unanimously agreed to this. It is hoped that he may best recover from his loss with the antidote of work. We are also now counted among the spies, Letty, that most questionable of services one may provide one's country. But, as it is necessary, we have indeed answered that call. It is worse than I thought with him since Fan's passing. He misses his dear little wife so much. As you may know, Letty, my grandfather's grandmother was a full-blood Apache Indian and it was she who taught our generations the fine art of scouting. We can track a grizzly bear or the entire Yankee army and know its size, its strength, its direction, and its intentions, all from the vibrations it leaves upon the ground. It is hoped that the faulty information General Jackson received at Kernstown will never again be repeated with us in the saddle, and that will be the only battle he will ever lose. So perfect and noble a warrior is he. At times, Letty, Jimmy and I portray Captains Bartholomew and Barton of the 105th Pennsylvania, returning Yankee deserters to their lines for court-martial. Please don't think ill of us for once again wearing these now hated uniforms, for they are rightfully ours, Letty, and not these Yankee impostors who have stolen our flag, our uniforms, our capital city, and our national freedom. Captain Bartholomew with the 105th Pennsylvania. Yes, sir. These deserters were picked up just outside the camp. Got about five of them back there. You may want to see to them. Take care of your men, sir. Take care of your men. I got to meet President Davis on the steps of the Confederate White House, lady. It was brief, but magnificent. I understand, lady that Miss Mary Lee, General Lee's wife, is planning to come and stay at Avenel some during the summers for her arthritis. I know you must be very proud and excited to have such a distinguished guest at your home. I imagine such visits now also come from necessity since the Yankees have stolen Arlington House from the Lee family 
and are now busy converting it into a Yankee cemetery, burying bodies as close as they can to the home, so that it may never again be used as a private dwelling. I cannot imagine how poor General Lee must feel having the ancestral home disfigured in such a manner. During my brief visit with General Lee, he praised Captain Breckinridge for holding up General Averill for an hour and a half at Kelly's Ford. He also intimated to me that he plans to visit Avenel once hostilities have ceased. I imagine the whole town would show up, Liddy. I know General Lee would be welcome in just about any home in the South. Of late, old Jack begins to worry me, Letty, with his incessant talk of not wishing to outlive his country. I do hope the Lord does not soon call him home. We would surely be lost without our fine General Jackson. Lee says that old Jack is his right arm. I'd be willing to wager somewhat more than that, as our friend Notorious Portafoy would say. Still the fighting goes on, Letty. <laughs> You'd be excited, Miss Letty, to know the names of the socialites and the society regulars who meet us all up and down the Potomac at night and give us much-needed gifts of quinine and other medical supplies paid for with their own money for the Confederate cause. These are the true heroes of the South as much as anyone on the battlefield. And one day... I shall speak their honored names in your presence. One day, hopefully, General Jackson will take us to great victory. One day, when you least expect me, darling girl, turn around. I'll be standing right behind you. Your Joshua. <laughs>